Productus Industrialis. Crops produced by labor on the part of man. From afar, I see this. I see concrete, slate gray, skyscrapers among soft trees. I see coldness, an emblem of modernity among nature. But I also see a giant pine cone fallen and burrowed into the ground, or the butt of an alien insect, suspended for a moment, but with the potential to dig deeper into the ground. I feel unsettled. I see something with a vague sense of familiarity, but an apprehensiveness of the unknown. What is it that sits so imposingly before me, so large and so bold? I can't quite pinpoint its abstracted form. It's too abstract to say for certain what it is, but not abstract enough that I feel disconnected or disinterested by it. I feel almost restrained by this unknowingness. This unknowingness becomes all the more unsettling for me when I consider a space in the park, because for me, parks are nostalgic. Family walks amongst green havens, picnics overlooking carefully crafted displays of floristry, a place of peace, rejuvenation, and clarity. But fructus changes this whole landscape for me. The coldness and the vague mimicry of nature, but not quite being nature itself. And the natural forms it does mimic are unsettling to me. They make it feel like a tense and unwelcome space because I see pustules, beehives, barnacles. This uncertain mimicry paired with the ginormous size of the sculpture, as well as the juxtaposing colours, really creates a distortion of place for me. I no longer feel the park holds a nostalgic sentimentality. It feels like a cold, tense space. The golden spell of the park being transformed makes me question, what do I find intrinsically beautiful about nature? Is it the shapes and the forms of nature itself? Or is it all just a misguided sense of nostalgic sentimentality? The cool, resistant grey juxtaposing the soft greens and browns of its situation is so appealing to my senses. I know what it's like to touch. I know how it feels. Hard, resistant and cold. But yet I haven't touched it. I haven't been that close to it yet. Why is this, I ask? Why am I drawn so strongly to something that's form I don't fully recognise or understand yet? From afar, while it seems foreign, up close, it is clear that Fructus is not just a man-made imposition. It is nature itself. It is almost ironic. The creation of this limestone was formed through natural processes over millions of years, but was interrupted by man, by a sculptor, its true form carved out and liberated at last. Yet, it appears as though it could almost have been untouched. From up close, we can see the rock in its raw beauty. Pure imperfections are visible within the rock's surface. Randall Page, in carving through the layers of the rock, has unlocked the life that resides within. The natural forms run across the curves, in turn, giving them energy and liberating the sense of life that brought them into being. These natural forms, the lobe and bulbous-like shapes, are so distinctive and recognisable. These lobes appear taut, becoming increasingly pendulous and bodily towards the ground. And we only have to look elsewhere in nature to suddenly see these shapes again and again. In considering it a natural form, I can't help but think the park is a perfect place for Fructus to belong. There is something beautiful about the fact that while it looks so imposing and so big in the space of the park, it is an intrinsically weak structure made from limestone, meaning it will weather. In this, it is ultimately an ongoing process of sculpture. The elements will come down in the park and the sculpture will continue to change and be weathered down. And in this, it is beautiful because it finally fits. Like the rest of the nature around it, with time, it will decay. As is the consequence of time, this piece will continue to evolve, new forms divulging, but immortal, 
long with the sculptor Outlast Man, a testament of time and the wonders of the natural world. Perhaps we should consider again then the positioning of this piece, the shapes of it, the form of it. After revealing that it is rooted in the form of botanical study, on the fecundity and sensuality of ripened fruit, I feel liberated now knowing what this piece represents. No longer do we feel uneasy or unsure by it, but we experience it in a different light for what it really is. Suddenly its context makes sense, as if this is how a ripened piece of fruit has fallen from a tree. Right here, completely naturally. And this is where it will continue to evolve and transform. Fructus naturalis, crop produced without the substantial assistance of man.